Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the first Lightning Talks, no, sorry, live demo session at DevCon 15. We've got three marvelous speakers giving four demos. Yes, four for the price of three. And first up is, that's clipping a bit, I think. Um, first up is Mario Lang talking to us about the Braille Music Compiler. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, this is probably a bit of an unusual demo because it is not really Devon related. It's just showing what I have been doing in the last several years if I were not working on Debian. Um, I'm a musician and I'm blind. Um, so uh, I came across uh, music notation at some point in my life. And I realized that's uh, a thing rather hard to deal with. Uh, because music notation is inherently two-dimensional, so it's not something that you can easily describe in text. And if you describe it in just normal text, then it gets rather long-winded and you probably... Uh, it, it's just too much. So there's a special code, actually. It's called Braille Music Notation. It was invented uh, roughly 100 years ago by the inventor of Braille, actually. Uh, which is a rather compact, uh, uh, rather compact representation of music notation in um, just Braille dots. It uses the six dot Braille system. Um, yeah. So the point is, there is actually no mm, free software for this. There are one or two very, very incomplete implementations around. Uh, so. Uh, I decided to do something about this and write software about it. Um, first implementation was something to convert music XML to Braille music. It uh, was interesting, but it was kind of a prototype. Um, so I found my dead ends and realized I have to start again. Um, so the current uh, project I'm working on is called BMC, the Braille Music Compiler, because I decided to do the more complicated direction first, which which is to parse Braille music and uh, produce some data structure from it. Um, yeah, that's basically the idea. And the other idea is to um, make this software help you in many, many ways. Uh, one thing is when I learned pr to read Braille music, I was not able to like know if I really uh, were interpreting it correctly. So I always wanted some software that could play the sounds to me. That's one big goal. Uh, and the other big goal is to make it easier for sighted and blind people to cooperate on music. Uh, so um, what BMC is currently doing um, is it reads uh, Braille music notation, uh, parses it, and um, then it can actually generate Lillipond or music XML from that so that you can enter music notation in, in uh, from the perspective of a blind person in, in your native format and uh, have it uh, presented to some sighted person who has no idea about Braille music notation. Uh, current idea is basically it parses this uh, rather complicated code. Um, it generates Lillipond of it and Lillipond does the rest of the work. So you, we, we generate SVG output and MIDI and whatnot. Uh, and now that I'm actually at a point where the backend is, is useful and doing some things, we actually started to create a GUI. Um, this user interface is about four months old, so it's really just experimenting around. Uh, it's the first, first time we, we started, uh, first time I and, and actually we worked with Qt. Qt. So uh, it's a rather new thing, but I think we have made some nice progress and I just wanted to show this uh, off, actually. Um, yeah, you still can. What was the slide? Also also um, so what this software can do is um, actually translate this automatically to a visual representation, um, thanks to Lidipond, actually. And um, and um, the backend system actually knows about uh, musical objects from both uh, representations. So 
you can like hover over uh, a visual node and have it highlighted in the actual uh, Braille music code. You, you can also click on a visual node so that the editing cursor in the Braille music editor window is, is positioned. This is f just to facilitate working together between blind and sighted people because if you're like, I mean this node, I mean this C down there, you can just point the mouse at it and click it and uh, the, the actually the same node will be under the cursor for the blind person. Um, you can also create your own Braille music. So this is just like one of the example files I ship with the project, it's something from Bach. But you can also, and that's the idea, if you can write Braille music yourself, you can very easily input. Uh, uh, Sorry, let me find. Yeah? Um, okay, I will show this. Um, this is like uh, the Braille dots that Mario sees on the Braille display. And this is the, um, the lower part is what uh, the representation is of the, uh, of the music. If I hover over this note, I see like uh, this is a G. And I see uh, the highlighted area is actually three um, characters. And so you see like uh, for this uh, eighth G, you need uh, three uh, characters to, repre to, be, to represent. Uh, it gets even funnier, for example, for this, you have like a G with a slur to the next, or tie, whatever it is called. There are also th uh, three uh, characters, but completely different. And just to show you and give you a feel how like complicated this is for even the sighted people, there's like a mode where you can uh, use, uh, 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 show this uh, without uh, using braille notation. And it, it looks then like this. The idea so if I yeah. like and, and yeah and now I can also compile it like if, yeah the idea here is that that braille actually always represents something uh, so yeah. the encoding for a normal text is yeah. just braille dots uh, and as a braille user you know the representation by heart so you can actually enter uh, braille music by just using the normal computer keyboard mm -hmm. so here you see like uh, this note represents a j a comma a double quote in the c great stuff and uh, the fun thing is uh, you can like uh, enter, uh, that's like, that's the only example I know. <laughs> uh, and if I like render this, I get this. And the funny thing is I can like reformat this. This is, uh, was intentionally made for like if, uh, to reflow or to like uh, justify it and only display, for example, uh, 20 columns or more or less. And if I press reformat, this um, code gets converted in Braille notation too. So, so you can actually yeah. see what, what, what it looks like on a Braille display. And it still, and it still works. Yeah, basically that's it, yeah? Yeah, that's the state of things. If anyone is interested in music-free software and uh, strange accessibility technology, I'm really looking for people who might be willing to contribute to this, especially because I'm rather new to Qt. If you're a good Qt programmer and if you see like things which could be done, uh, then just talk to me, it would be very nice. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, next up are DKG, um, Daniel Khan Gilmore and Annibal um, Monsalvo Salazar, I think it is, um, demonstrating to us with a sketch um, the key signing arrangement. Can we get Annibal set up too? Hello, hello. I think it's working. Try speaking. Does it work? One, two, three. All right. Sounds good. I think we're ready. Are you guys okay? Okay, great. Thanks. Um, so, um, uh, for the way the key signing is working at this particular event, um, we asked people to send uh, their keys to Anibal 
before the event started, and those keys were all put into a file, and everyone has the same file. Um, you can fetch the file from this URL here, and below it here is the SHA-256 checksum of the file. Um, so this file is a text file, and it contains people's um, keys and fingerprints and user IDs, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how you can use this throughout the rest of the conference. We've got, uh, what, six days more of the conference? You've got, that's, uh, if you meet 10 people a day, that'll be 120 people that you'll meet. Uh, 20 people a day, that's 120 people. <laughs> my, math is, my math is slurring already in two days in. Um, so we're just gonna show you um, how you can use this. Um, if you wanna fetch the file right now and take a look at it, or if you've already fetched it, you know what it looks like. Basically, it's just got sort of the, uh, the, the listing of a uh, key with a fingerprint with a number next to it with some names on it. So we're going to do a little demonstration of what it's like to use, to use this mechanism to do your key signing throughout the week instead of at a single particular event. So Okay. Uh, ah. Hey, Anibal, uh, how's it going? Daniel, I know you maintain the Hello package, and I have a few, a few patches that I'm oh, using for Oh, that would be great. Hello is years. super buggy, and I need all the help <laughs> I can get. Um, so uh, I would love to work with you more on it, but I'd like to have a way that we can communicate uh, securely when, we're, uh, when we've left the conference. Yeah, we could cross-sign our keys. Uh, I just I downloaded the, the, the text file here, and I checked the checks, I calculated the checksum. Everything is correct according to this, and I also checked my fingerprint, and what about you? Yeah, so I fetched the file, and I checked the SHA-256 uh, fingerprint of the file, the, the checksum of the file, it, it checked out. I looked in the file, and I saw that it had my name, and my fingerprint was correct, um, and I'm number 62 in the file. I'm number 22, and here is my ID, so you could check my ah, ID. Ah, government-issued ID, huh? <laughs> hmm, all right. Can well, I if you, you want to see my government-issued ID, here you go. Ah, uh, yes. Um, so it says Anibal Monsalve Salazar. Wait a second, is that? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, and you said Daniel you said you're, Moore, you said you, you checked the file 22. and you ch you checked the file on your fingerprint. Um, yes. you what number are you? I'm number twenty two and you are number I'm number sixty two yep. in the file. All right, so number, I'm gonna write down number sixty two. Number twenty two. Uh, Daniel and Can Gilmore. Yep. yep. Anibal Monsalve. Salazar, cool. So yeah. I can use this. So I, I'm not going to sign your key right away, but uh, when I get home, when I'm doing my key signing, I can find it in the file and I can get your fingerprint from yeah, that. Yeah, that's you. Oh, I'll, I'll keep this. No, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> All right. So great. thank you very much. I'll do the same, and I'm going to sign keys when I get back home. Okay, great. Thank Thanks you a lot. Yeah, look forward Bye. to working on hello with you. Yep. <laughs> All right. Bye -bye. So. Does this, does this make sense as to, as to how that process can work? Um, what we uh, we want to encourage you to meet people throughout the week, and it can be a little bit awkward to meet people. This gives you one, one thing, one way to meet, to, one thing to talk to people about, and then you can, I'm sure you can find other things that you're both interested in in Debian, even if it's not the hello package. So, um, so how much time do we have, oh, oh, oh clock meister? Um, so <laughs> we'll go ahead and, and read this out here for the benefit of the uh, spooling video. Um, it's uh, four niner eight echo alpha foxtrot alpha zero um, delta thank you delta foxtrot echo seven foxtrot bravo eight niner two delta seven bravo six delta two three two nine two three delta eight bravo one eight delta alpha nine eight zero foxtrot alpha four four Charlie 4, Charlie 686, Foxtrot, 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 <laughs> 9552, Foxtrot, 68360, Echo, Foxtrot. So, um, so I encourage you really to meet people during the conference. This is what we want to have happen. I miss a sticker? Uh, on the back. Yeah. If you have a sticker on the back, it says I can sign, and it would be much easier to find other people. I recommend that you find the front desk that might have some masking tape and make your own sticker that says, I would like to sign your key. Or you get a piece of paper and you could slip it in here. There's all kinds of ways to hack the process. <laughs> um, but you should assume that if people are here at DebConf, 
they may not have had their key in this, in this particular file, so you can't use that mechanism. They may have copies of their key on slips of paper, um, and that's okay too. This is another way to do it. So we could have done this, hey, here you go, and then we could have done the same exchange, I've got mine written on a slip of paper too. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that you can do the key exchange, and I encourage you to do it as a way just to meet people. By the way, you can get somebody's fingerprint and not sign it. You just know what their fingerprint is. You can sign it in a way that doesn't publish it. If, you, if you're embarrassed, you can also decide that you don't want to show your government-issued ID. Maybe you don't have government-issued ID, and that's okay too. The worst thing that happens is that somebody says, well, I'm not comfortable signing it if I don't see it. And that's okay. They can, you can still give them a copy of your fingerprint and say, I'm going to communicate with you about the hello package, and, uh, and then they'll know who you are, and you can exchange secure messages in the future. So, um, so meet people, get in touch, understand what your common points are in the Debian project, and be able to have a secure communication on the internet after you've left the conference. So thanks. Thank you very much. Sorry for the phone noise. Um, the last speaker doing two separate demos is André Suri, um, and he will tell us what we're doing. Hello, I'm uh, visible. Hello, hello. Yep. Um, this is on borrowed machine. So, hello, I'm I'm Andre, and I'm uh, kind of DNS geek if you know me. So, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, well, I want to ask you well a few questions first. Do you have your own domain name? If yes, raise hand. And do, do you sign it with DNSSEC? No, why not? Well, usually because DNSSEC is too complicated. So um, <laughs> I'm going to show you that's not true anymore. So let's see if it still connects it to the internet. Uh, by the way, you can query the machine. It's it's. Okay. Or it's better? You can Okay. So um, uh, uh, we at the CZNIC, uh, the company I work for, we are also dot CZ registry. Um, created quite a lot of open source software. Well m you might know Bird, Internet Routing Demon, but also not DNS. We just the joke was very funny at the beginning, but uh, after years of seeing it's not DNS, it's not so funny anymore. But, <laughs> but we can't change the name now. Um, so if you install not DNS, which is package as, as uh, the package not, then uh, uh, it's installed and um, it's version two, which should be hitting unstable soon enough. Uh, then there's something like etc not, then uh, we are going to create a directory for keys, and uh, I can type. Um, we have a tool called Key Manager, and we just initialize the the directory. It well, it has some. <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> but 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 uh, that's that's okay, uh, because here it stores. Uh, there's nothing here yet. But it stores uh, the the keys. But uh, if I create a new policy, um, uh, it confused me as well. Uh, I will add new policy. I can use just the defaults, and it will use uh, RSA SHA two five six, I think, by default with some default key sizes. I could also add a new policy. Uh, we can call it just ECDSA. Um, and the algorithm is 13, or it can uh, uh, also accept the mnemonics from IANA, but it's much complicated than 13. Uh, yes, um, and I think you need to type a size because it's not it's not perfect yet <laughs> uh, because it, this is the first version. Uh, also, we can enable NSEC free and this is the, the second policy we have for, for zones. So um, uh, we have some policies. Uh, you can 
easily use the default one, just add, add something. Then we have a configuration file, and we will add some zone or zones, but I think that one zone is enough for now. Then uh, I will show you that this is also one of the new things we have in the version two. Uh, we have something we'll call templates. So I will just uh, add some stuff here. I think it's like this, but I, I don't remember this by. So yes, it's percent s. And um, this is the default storage for all the domains I'm, uh, and because it's default, it will be just used for, for all the zones it doesn't have uh, its own policy. So um, I have this demo zone, um, and there's another a few things we need to add. This is the directory uh, with we initialized. And then the last thing, um, we enable the signing. And that should be enough. But it's live demo, so things are expected to break. Um, oh, we, we are missing the zone. Uh, so zones, and I have something like so I will, I will show it. This is just simple, simple zone. I just copied for my uh, normal, normal server, which is master DNS rocks. As I said, I'm DNS geek. Uh, so I had to buy a new GTLD, uh, even though it's useless. <coughs> so this is not yet signed. And uh, one last thing, because this is the usual problem. Uh, because the files could be unreadable, and oh, <laughs> then there's something wrong. As usual, I, I said that things will break, but um, there might be something like. Hmm. I don't know.
and this keyboard is giving me a hard time because the escape is not where I expected it to be. Um, okay, and this should not be here twice. And it's missing the configuration for the Okay, so um, so as I said, this is just uh, uh, another policy. This one with DNS signing turned off, and, and this uh, zone files are stored elsewhere. And uh, this is the module called Synth Record, it's like synthetize. And there are two configurations: one for the forward. Uh, records uh, and one for uh, reverse records. And it could also work for IPv4, but IPv4 is not that hard. So uh, the ID is just some random string. The type, as I said, is forward records, so it will generate uh, quote A's. The prefix is, again, some random stri string you want to have in DNS. TTL for auto-generated records. And the network it applies to, uh, uh, took a liberty to use uh, the conference network. For the reverse records, it's similar. It, the type is reverse. Pre prefix has to be same, so the records matches. And the origin is the, the domain name it ends in. Um, so again, TTL and, and the network. And uh, now we have, I will just delete the. Um, Alt configuration. So we have uh, two two domain names, and uh, uh, one is tied to to forward zone, and one is uh, the PTR records. So uh, I will have to copy. Synth um, demo synth synth. So there are two zones, and they only have uh, source of origin and NS records. And uh, the reverse is the same. And um, again, we issue can see reload and hope it works. Yay! First time. So, um, and then I will show you how it works. Um, For example, C15. Ah. As I said, the keyboard is giving me. Oh. How do I get rid of the split screen? Does anybody know that? Okay. <laughs> um, this should work as well. Uh, Okay. If not, DNS utils come to rescue. Uh, and this is auto generated record. And uh, if I copy that, so it copies the PTR as well, uh, and ask for this. return then there's some okay there 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 has to be some something broken um uh this Much better. And the DNSSEC online signing will, will be able to sign this as well. So if you need, uh, if you maintain a large IPv6 pools and you are mandated to have PTR records for all of them, so the, for example, sending emails works, then this might help you 
a lot. And in s well, the next version of NodeDNS, it could be also DNS signed, which is a good thing, right? OK, questions? Yes. Uh, can you override uh, some records? Still using that, but override the record in the zone file? Yes, you can add uh, records to the zone file. I, I, well, we have still some time. I can show you that if you want. No, OK, OK. OK? You, uh, yeah, you, have, you can have uh, manually, well, entered records in, into those zone files I showed you. And then it will look up them in the zone file first and then fall back to auto generated synthesized records. Okay. So thank you for listening to my <laughs> DNS. Thank you all very much for coming along. Thank you very much to us.